everyone. We are here with Captain Noble Griswold aboard his lovely sailboat e-ticket and we're here to find out more about the man and his boat and his crew that he's very proud of. So first of all, how did you come up with the name e-ticket? Well, when we bought the boat, its name was e-ticket. Oh. Once we found out what that meant, we actually thought it was pretty cool. So are you familiar with e-ticket yourself? Not exactly. Uh, what? Well, it's, it's a Disneyland um, fast ticket you could get for oh, the fast rides. Oh, right. It was the e-ticket. If you wanted the, the most adventurous, funnest, best water rides, best rides they had, the e-ticket was the ticket. It was covered. So, and that way, in fact, we actually have inside the boat an actual e-ticket. And you can see it's many water adventures. So, and that way, e-ticket lives up to our name very well. So that's kind of your, so we kept it. your token yes. or symbol of what your boat stands for. It came that way and we uh, adopted it and yeah. actually ran with it and have enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and is this your first boat or what's your history with well, I started, sailing? Well, uh, I started boating quite, quite well in college, in junior okay. college is when I started really boating as far as sailing goes. And that was just circumstances where someone asked me to go out in a boat, and uh, I was hooked. I went sailing, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's not a sound, but the ripple of the water and the wind, you can hear nature and the birds, and you're gliding along like you're flying. And I was hooked. So within a year, I bought my first sailboat, and I've had one ever since. So I, I feel like I'd be homeless without a sailboat. Aw, that's sweet. And was that... Did you go to college out here in, yeah, here so in the, California? Yeah, so what took me away from the country in the area where I grew up, which is, I'm not, I'm, I'm a very unlikely sailor. Um, <laughs> I grew up in the mountains. My parents didn't sail. Um, no one sailed in my family, except I found out later and my great grandpa was quite a sailor. So maybe it runs in my family, I don't know. Uh, in, in any case, I guess all our grandpas were sailors, really. Because sailing used to be what yeah. we did. It's a it's right. a fading sport of sorts. Uh, anyways, um, I forgot the question now. Oh, how did I get into sailing? Um, well, that, no, you answered that pretty good. Um, and what are we sitting on? What kind of sailboat is this exactly? Like well, this is a Bene, this is a Beneteau 38, which is a, a French made boat, and uh, it was built specifically in uh, I think uh, North Carolina or South Carolina. Uh, in America by the French company for um, to be a charter boat for the Moorings fleet which sails in the Caribbean hmm. so the first seven years of its life it was a spoiled tropical brat and everyone d abused her and uh, uh, because that's what happens it's a charter boat and, and people don't think much about taking good care of a charter boat so uh, the person who chartered them back then, I think what they did is you could buy a boat and put it in a charter and they'd help make your payments. I think they still may do that. So you charter it for seven years and then you have a small buyout and you own the boat. So the person, the first owner of the boat, that's what he did. And he, he bought the boat from charter and, and then he owned it until we purchased it. And this boat was actually located in Florida. Oh, so wow. it was a very unique situation. I don't know if you want to hear that story, but we had it trucked out from Florida and um, that was an adventure itself. We never even saw the boat except for pictures and videos and surveyors you know, is how we saw the boat. So made decision to buy it. It was a very good price because some of the issues it had from all the abuse. And uh, so we had it trucked out here and we've had it ever since, which has been about 11, 12 years. Oh, that's a great story. Very yeah. interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, the person before who had it did race it. And so he okay. kind of set it up to race, and he, that's one of the reasons I bought it, because it's a cruising boat, but he set it up to race as well. So it's a racer cruiser, is how we look at it. And that's awesome, because I like to race, and I still uh -huh. like to take people out and go cruising, and has nice steps in the back, and go swimming, no problem. It's a very all-around user-friendly boat, and it races quite well, at least to its handicap. Okay, and do you want to talk about your crew then, because I know you said you're really proud of... The, well, we'll morph into that with the, the, the beer can races are done every Thursday through Venetia Yacht Club and you do 
more serious races too? Yes, uh, we've been racing, well the first year that I raced my own, captain my own boat was 1995. So, um, and that was about six boats ago. So it's been, and that, that was, <laughs> that boat was called Chile. And uh, in any case, uh, we actually crashed that boat and got a special award called the Ship Happens Award because we broke the keel and had swimmers and it was a disaster. So, but I loved it. You know, I still love the fact that we're out there doing it. It was an adventure. So I started racing then and then I spread my wings fairly far. I um, got into the Bay Area racing, of course, did some one design, uh, some handicap racing. We used to do the big races, like what Big Dad. Hand handicap races? Um, with the boats, so they have one design racing and they have handicap racing. And one design racings are boats of the same design, and so they have no differences in their handicap. It's both for both. Okay. Handicap racing is an attempt to take the different characteristics of a boat and match them in some fair way where you can still compete with each other, even though you have a big one and I have a small one, or vice versa. And so that's what handicap racing is. And most of the racing we're doing in the bay is handicap racing, and that's the kind of racing we're doing here in Venetia. Uh, because there's not enough boats that are matched to do one design race. I wondered about that, how you make it a fair race yeah, so with the, all the different boats. But yeah, there's an organi organization that does it, the, the YRA, which is the Yacht Racing Association. And uh, they run it, they, they do the handicaps for the whole Bay Area. And you can appeal if you think someone's handicapped wrong. There's a, there's a bit of a system in play. And it's not perfect. And if, you, if you're winning, you usually like it, and if you're not, you usually don't. You know, it's, it's an excuse if you want to have one. But it's, it's, it at least gives us a chance to go out there and, and compete with each other. Right. It looks like everybody has fun either way. Very much so. They win or lose. So, so our longer races have been down in Monterey Bay. Um, gone out in the ocean a couple of times. But surprisingly, I get seasick more than most people do. So for me, ocean race, and no one expects that because I'm an avid water person. But no one likes to feel sick either. And uh, I've known a few other people in the situation. And of course, after a few days in the ocean, they say the sickness passes. But uh, I'm, I'm always the one who don't, doesn't think it would for me. <laughs> so I don't like really long races. Yeah. So I, I, we've taken the opportunity to sail around the world, see a Cortez and other places, but not by boat, we drive down there or fly down there and then take someone else's boat out. So to me, the magic is chartering a boat or sailing in fun destinations, not necessarily the drive to get there. Right. Don't want to not be on the boat the whole time. And I don't have the time. I don't have the luxury yeah, right. time. So. Does ginger help with the... It does, at, at, at minor levels, but I haven't been in the roughest of seas, you know, maybe 12, 15 foot seas. But hour after hour, that makes me very sick. You know? Yes, I haven't been out on a boat that long. I don't know what that yeah. would be like either. Yeah, but luckily in the bay, it's most of the swells that, that does it. Luckily in the bay here, I rarely feel sick. I mean, sometimes I go down below and I'm reading something and it's a rough day. I'll, I'll actually feel a little bit of seasickness, but never like in the ocean. Oh. You need to get the, the swells ties that we have, huh? They're, they seem to keep the boat from rocking too much. Yeah, yeah, well, in the ocean, I don't know if that would still do it. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, let's see, what else? Oh, well, uh, speaking of uh, rough seas and all that, what would you say your scariest experience has been out on the water? You know, I've been asked that a fair amount, and there's quite a few answers. <laughs> there's quite a few scary times. Anyone who's sailed, you know, out in the ocean, uh, racing, pushing the boats, it, it, things happen. And uh, obviously, I told you about the first race I ever did where we broke a keel, and we had four swimmers. That was pretty pretty scary. But How, luckily, what happened? Uh, the keel actually broke. With, we were overpowered on an old 1966 boat. Oh. But I don't know if that's my scariest event. Probably, I would say... The scariest event was racing down Monterey, and uh, um, the wind, this was probably 15 years ago, and the wind was building very gradually, started off with just calm conditions, and we had the barbecue go, a beautiful day in the ocean, mm -hmm. and we're racing, I don't know, we're probably about 20 boats racing, it was called the Boreas Race, and um, I think it was probably 2002 or so, so maybe 20 years ago. And, uh, 
we it was our longest ocean race we'd done. We had a fairly inexperienced crew, but we had some crew that had sailing as well. And I was inexperienced. It was the longest race I'd done. Uh, but I knew the basics, of course, and charts. And you know, we have we had meetings ahead of time to know how to do things. But anyways, coming in, the winds start building very, very, very gradually, but continuously and beyond what it was predicted to do. So we didn't make the necessary adjustments to reduce our sail. And we're racing, right? So you leave as much sail up as you can. And pretty soon the waves get bigger and we're starting to hit speeds we never hit in our boat. It was very exciting, the drones pumping. The, the danger thoughts really weren't there because it was so gradual, you know, and how we got there. And we didn't know the upper limits of the boat, so we were gonna find out. And it built and the waves built. We started surfing down waves and we're in a Newport 30. Uh, called Noble Prize, and we started hitting 10s, 11s, and 12s, and 13, 13, 8, you know, and it's getting pretty squirrely, it's a rudder, and I'm, I'm driving, you know, hard as you can, front weight, and wedge down, and you know, you drive for your life, that's your job, and you got everyone else's life, and it was pretty exciting, now I realized I had my hands pretty full, we had the spinnaker up, so, um, you know, we were pushing it. The boat's rocking and rolling more. It's getting picked up in the corner, kind of rolling this this way. The wind's pulling really hard. I have to fight it really hard with the rudder. Comes ripping back, and I'm fighting it back the other way, but we're, we're doing it until we don't. And then one gust was a little stronger, one wave was a little bigger. And we do a complete round down in the ocean, right about twilight with the whole crew. And a round down is the scariest thing that happens in the sailboat. Um, what is that exactly? Yeah, so a roundup is more typical, and that's what you see. And I think you've seen some roundups with some of the video work you've done where the boat lays over and then turns, and the wind's so powerful, it knocks the boat over and the boat turns into the wind, which is what they're designed to do for safety. They turn the weather. A round down does the opposite. So a round down, the wind is so powerful, it drives the boat down wind and away from the wind until it use the accidental jibe where you have no and you it, it loads up the front of the boat use the bow digs in and you lose steering because of the powers associated with it and so the rudder kind of comes out as it digs in and it'll literally kind of go in its nose and then go down wind and broach with a jibe that sweeps the whole deck wow yeah scary stuff okay. so we do that with the spinnaker up and it tore out the forestay that holds the bottom of the pole, and the pole flying forward and smashed the mm -hmm. the uh, uh, forestay and bent around it. And it would, you know, these are strong poles. And the boat pinned down with the spinnaker up, and a wave comes, and it kind of washes in there, and we're pinned down. We're laid on our side. It's, and I mean on our side. So while you're sitting, you'd be underwater. The water was up to about here, because we're on this side. Uh -huh. And that's where all the halyards were. And I yelled to get out, you have to release a corner of that spinnaker. And I yelled to the, 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 the um, tremor there to blow the halyard, which is let it go completely. The halyard is what holds the sail up. Okay. And it's underwater, the lever, and he's reaching underwater and he can't find it. And meanwhile, we're pinned over and here comes a wave. I look over and I didn't have my hatch completely closed because we just didn't anticipate this. And it was one of my mistakes. And I see a wave coming, and there's nothing I can do. I can't steer, I can't, you know, he's got the, the boat's pen, and I thought, this is how it happens. This is how you sink a boat. And uh, I watched in the horror as the wave came. He pops the halyard about the moment before the wave hits. The boat starts right, and the wave hits the back of the boat, and a good amount of water splashes in, and some goes in the cabin, but not nearly as much as I'd expected. And then the boat started coming up, and then we started getting control of the boat. And uh, and the funny part of that story, because there is a funny part, mm -hmm. remember I said we were barbecuing? Yes. Well, the barbecue is on the high side. And so while we're pinned down on this side, mm -hmm. briquettes are falling out. Go, psh, psh, psh. We later joked about it, going, if they ever found us drowned, they'd wonder how we got burned, too. <laughs> But luckily they didn't find us. Luckily they didn't find us drowned. We ended up, I think, finishing second in our division in that race, and they gave us a special spinnaker handling award, which they always give to the boat that has the hardest time with the spinnaker run. So we got that award too. But that was probably the scariest. Well, one, one of the scariest. Sounds like a brave crew. You, you reacted pretty 
well to that situation. You did good. Well, sailor, I think sailors in, are a hardy bunch. Mm -hmm. and, and, and part of the deal is the adventure that comes with it. Like, I don't know, like a pilot or like a, a mountain climb. There's consequences to the mistakes. And so you tend to be a person who really is reliable and can work under um, Think fast under duress. And that, yeah, yes. you don't freeze up. And you're somewhat like that. Adventure Hardly side. Be there, right? Yeah. <laughs> And they say sailing is boredom pierced by, you know, moments of terror. And, and there's a lot of truth to that. I like that. And there's times you're out there and it's so relaxing and beautiful, even like this day. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the day was one of the most relaxing times I ever had in the ocean. I and later that. that day, I think I'm going to drown. The, the perfect storm, that movie, would, yes. it was so calm yeah. yes. before the big storm, yes. right? In fact, that's where that saying comes from. I think that's often the case. When there's been a big calm, there's also, uh, I think, a real opportunity for a wind to come through. That's mm -hmm. something when it does come. It's like pent up energy. Yeah. Well, what else should we talk about? Do you want to talk about your, you've been with your crew for? Yeah, let's time? talk about the crew. Okay. Um, we have been a winning boat. Uh, I would say about every other year, being modest. Okay. Um, and that's probably not so funny for some people. But we, we went at least half the time. And and uh, we've done it because, mostly because, of a consistent, dedicated crew. And obviously we have to keep the boat tuned and have good sails and have a boat that will sail to your rating. But really, the magic happens with a reliable team that you can depend on that, that gives you everything they got and have experience and that comes with time and that is what we have um, at award ceremonies i've pointed out on several occasions that we have hundreds of years of experience sailing together on this boat mm -hmm. 100 plus seriously 150 how can that be wow. well well you have a crew of 10 and the average person has been sailing together for about 20 years and there's 200 years of sailing together so that's that's a lot of magic that's a lot that of experience um, and there's nothing that replaces that and without that crew we wouldn't win and we need other things too of course but i think the other thing that the crew has been is kind of like a family so we've become friends we've lived life together we've lost some crews over the years and gone to their funerals uh, luckily not because our actions on this boat um, but you know, we are, it's its a lifetime. In fact, I sometimes stop and think, how did I get here? You know, I like mm -hmm. that song, you know, if you, if you know which one I'm referring to. And, and, I, I, and not that I'm so successful, because I don't mean it that way. I mean, how did I become a sailboat racer for a lifetime and love it and, and see it never ending? And that that's, that's the story that I, I reflect on it, and the circumstances of life and finding a passion and then finding a crew that has that passion and they won't let me quit, you know, because they want to do it too. Right. So we together are going through this wonderful journey of experiencing racing and sailing and all the beauty here, which you now have been showing to the world. And uh, we're just lucky enough to have the passion and get into it and, and make it a priority and have a group of people to do it with us. And, and we have the time of our lives. You make me want to do it now. Love it. Let's get a sailboat. If you like nature <laughs> and you like beauty and you have a little adventure in you mm -hmm. and you have a little time and interest, you bet. It's just right for you. And from what I can tell you, guys, the muscle, I think. Yeah. It's not all about that. And it's amazing yeah. how you can find women have, you know, oftentimes not considered as strong, but there's so much they can do in so many ways besides strength. Okay. And there's, there's lots of other things to say besides just brute strength. Okay, let's see. Well, let's see. Uh, what do you want the world to know about you and your boat? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a big one. Well, I've kind of been talking about it. I mean, there's no right. surprise there. I mean, yeah. um, wow. <laughs> I don't know. The four million I, I don't, dollar question. I don't know <laughs> that I have an answer for that. You know, it's. No, it's, you've done great. It, it's. I grew up in the country, and we used to go up in the mountains in nature for, for calm and beauty and kind of to reconnect. Uh, and now I don't live in the mountains, and I live in this beautiful bay, and I can go out there and 
get the same thing and get something even better. You know, even a more beautiful in its own way. So, and it's always amazing to me and to most voters how few people are out there. Um, the, the favorite example is we're going down Bay to race for the weekend, which we'll be doing this uh, upcoming weekend here. Uh, on a Friday night, it takes about four hours with the music on, we're probably barbecuing, we're drinking, we're sailing, we're talking, we're having a great time. And you look around, it's a beautiful night. You look around, you see maybe one or two other boats in sight, in eyesight. Mm -hmm. It's shocking. And you see a little bit of commercial traffic here and there. And it's just you and, and no one else. Sometimes there's no one in sight. Lots of times, especially at night. So it's surprisingly unpopular. Well, I guess you'd say unpopulated. And then you look at the freeway and it's bumper to bumper traffic. And we're like, we're the lucky ones. Right. I, at least there's more people out walking these days since COVID. Yes. I see more yes. people yes. enjoying nature yes. that way, but I that's agree. interesting. I agree with you. In fact, I bike and I, I enjoy nature in other ways. I kayak and I kite surf. Oh, okay. And, and I, I've been fortunate to uh, really you know, embrace this area. So it's, uh, but Us too. I live in Glen, Glen Cove currently, and when I ride my bike in the state park, uh, since COVID has happened, there are so many more people out in the state park than there ever was. It's a good thing, right? Yeah. Enjoying nature. Yeah, what else? Uh, any plans for the future? <laughs> well, so the journey of e-tickets is kind of interesting. Uh, I should probably have mentioned that uh, after being beat up for so many years, first by inexperienced sailors who didn't care because it was a rental boat, second by uh, the previous owner who was a contractor and never had a boat before, so he did a lot of things wrong. Um, we've been trying to kind of restore the boat and we're not trying to make her a show boat but uh, we try to give her some of her glory because she's really a beautiful spirit she sails really well she performs really well so with that we, we were contemplating buying a new boat they're a different boat so mm -hmm. it's, instead where you e tickets at as many may know is we greatly have changed during the last year uh, so we painted the hole dark blue which uh, it was white before, and so for 10 years it was white. We redid okay. all, all our uh, all our wood and did all our decking, we did off the back and inside, and did all this color thing. We, we redid the counter, we put a stereo system in, we pretty much outfitted her with new sails. Um, have a few more things left to do in the five plus and stuff, but we want her to show. She's 30 something years old. She's a championship boat. She deserves it. We're proud. <laughs> Yeah, we were that way with our uh, other boat, too. We just kept trying to make her look better and better. And it's, it's been rewarding, I think, for the crew, too, because we are proud. They're proud of her, too. That's the thing. They're invested yeah. as well. Yeah. And so now I make sure their shoes are clean before they come in the boat. And when we come in, I've got fuzzy things around my fenders, <laughs> you know, because I don't want to scratch the new paint. And so far, we haven't. I don't blame you. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And when we come in, we used to, I used to sail in a lot more because I, I enjoy the ability to sail in, which I've done with every boat we've ever owned. And this was a 15,000 pound boat, so you have to be careful sailing in a boat like this. But oh, in any so case, that's a heavier weight. I pretty much have quit sailing in because, you know, I'm trying to keep her all nice. So yeah. Now we drop our sails out in the turning basin and come in the motor. I'm really careful when we're banging all nice. What's, uh, so that's a heavy weight, 15,000? Uh, has, has a lot of inertia, momentum, yeah. a lot of momentum. Uh, as boats get bigger, they turn slower and they especially stop slower. Uh, obviously, you have a motor uh, to help you stop, and, and, but when you sail in, you don't have a motor. So you use your back when the sail, you use the crew, you have to come in really adjust your speed low enough to be able to land it without too much violence. So um, sailing in is a lot harder. So, but what we've been doing, of course, is trying to take really good care of her now. So. So she's a completely different looking boat. And uh, for anyone who knew her, they, they hardly recognize her. How, how much longer do you think your restorations will take? Mm, well, we're most of the way done. Another, you know, the, probably this year, this, this season, is it will be the remainder of it working on here and there. But she's always a work in progress, too. Maintain, right. Maintaining a boat is, is like maintaining a house, but probably worse. We have more things going on, but just many systems. Um, 
So, and for the foreseeable future, she serves our, our, our needs very well, so I have no plans to abandon ship. And move very on. good. Well, you're fabulous. You, you must be really famous around here, your story and how long you've been doing it, the crew's stuck with you for so long. Amazing. It's been an honor, actually. It's, uh, the Yacht Club's been very supportive of mm -hmm. us. Uh, you know, over the years, I think I've become a, a better competitor as far as maintaining friendships. I think in the early years of racing, I, winning was too important to me. I've always been a competitor, and I have five brothers, and you know, you had to beat everyone. Uh, and I still am competitive. Everyone knows that about me. But Nothing wrong with that. But I try not to carry any frustration into the yacht club and into the conversations with with my fellow. Sailors, and we're a small group, and we need to stick together. So they've been good by me, and I think I'm learned, have learned to be good by them, and I appreciate our sailing community. And it's been a, it's been nice to be such a part of Venetia. You know, we've been here long enough to have beautiful videography, and, mm -hmm. and we had uh, Matt Powers for a couple years, was shooting a lot of boat pictures before he passed. If you knew him, mm -hmm. and uh, we've just been real blessed in the last few years to have him. Venetia embraces. Oh, I love Venetia too. And, and Venetia beauty. Perfect. I mean, you know, we, like I heard one person say, one skipper say, Stephen Dale was, was worth mentioning his boatman, who you may know, his boat yes. is right across here, and mm -hmm. he's done a lot for Venetia beauty and for sailing. And, um, and for us, he's taking some wonderful pictures of us. He said, you know, when he got home on Thursday night, especially when he did map powers for every week, was putting it out there. Now I think with Bob putting it out there, that's going to be the situation. Where you come home and, and you check Facebook to see what pictures people took and share. It is fun. And it's thrilling. Great, yeah. You put all this, you don't see that. We don't see that. We're out there doing it. Right. You see it. It's obvious to you, but not to us. And to see our boats and our crews and our fellow competitors and the beauty of it all on the film is, is really, really exciting. Really. I enjoy the videos of taken from the boats too. Yeah, and I think it elevates our game. I think people, you know, now they start realizing we're not just out there by ourselves. The community is watching us out here, yeah. especially in race night. I think it is a very important part of our community. It's wonderful. It's, and, it, and, and I'm delighted to be part of that. Forgetting anything? Oh, I think you did, guys. It's done great. We got a lot of video. This is going to be a long video. Yeah, that's, right. that's really, I but it's good. Well, no, don't cut uh, short. This is from the heart. I'll mention one other thing because this is yeah. this is the truth of the matter. Sometimes people say, you know, besides my love heart, why do you? How can you justify the expenses? Because it costs some money and stuff, and the, and the time. How can you justify it? You know, because I can't. They say, I wish I could. Right? I hear that. But it's amazing how. It adopts into your life. And for me, as a business person here in town, the publicity of it all, the notor notoriety of it all, and the fact that I'm a real estate broker here in town, kind of somehow markets me in a weird way, as long as I am not too big of a jerk, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously I realized that over time that I, you know, I am being marketed by my, my own actions. So it's been nice. So many people on the boat have bought and sold houses through me. So many people at the Yacht Club have done that. Even my fellow competitors. It I, works. I have had the experience mm -hmm. where competitors wouldn't, in the early days, work with me because I was too big of a jerk. Because I was too competitive. It pays off to be a nice guy. So I have learned, mm -hmm. yeah, trying to learn to not be that kind of person. I don't want to be that kind of person. <laughs> so anyways. So it's been wonderful that it's been, it's paid me back. Everything right. I put into it, I got back in the and, and, and that's the magic, really. Sounds good. Yeah.